Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that arrived in Riku box number two. So first and foremost, a massive shout out and thank you to Riku Sinaksinaho, my Finnish beer mule living in Olu in the northwest of the country. And it's thanks to him that you guys get to enjoy a steady stream of Finnish reviews here on Rampant Lion Reviews. He's a lovely guy, very knowledgeable about his beers and it seems that he's got his own beer mule network within Finland that he uses to get a hold of various different things from across the country. He always orders a few extras for me and then sends them over here to Sweden for me to review. So Riku, a big thank you to you for making these Finnish reviews here on the channel possible. And I hope that you guys are enjoying these as well because I've certainly enjoyed filming them. The standard of Finnish beer seems to be very high these days, but it's very difficult to get a hold of it if you're not actually in Finland itself. So uh, yeah, awesome tough people like Riku who are supporting the channel, of course. So yeah for this review then we are going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel before i think this is my fourth beer from this brewery if memory serves me correctly but i think it might only be the third review because i'm sure one of them was destroyed by a dodgy memory card but yeah the this review then is uh, we're going to stick to the Olu area for this one and we're going to return for the third or fourth time, whatever it would be, to Maestila Panimo. So this particular beer is called Bully. It comes in at 10% ABV and this one is an Imperial Stout. So um, yeah, we're working our way through the Finnish big boys at the moment. I think I've still got about four or five Finnish beers left in the fridge, but this is one I have to say that I was quite looking forward to. So yeah, the last beer we had from uh, My Stila Panimo was the Bye Bye Rye, which was a lovely rye IPA. I really enjoyed that actually. So I have to say, I'm very curious to see what the dark end of the spectrum is like from, uh, from this brewery. The first two beers we had were Sours, then we had the Rye IPA, and now we've got this one. So I think next time I'll need to try like a Lager or a West Coast IPA or, you know, something along those lines. But yeah, very curious to see how my Stila do with an Imperial Stout. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully you guys enjoy my take on it. And uh, hopefully it's an interesting review. Let's go for it then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from my Stila Panimo before, and we will know to add some more to this at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Finnish beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to quite regular at the moment because we're still working our way through the Riku beers and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about my Stila Panimo then on to my brewery notes so my Stila Panimo as I've mentioned to you already are based in Olu in the northwest of Finland and the company was founded back in 2015 by the Haru brothers Yoni and Riku so apparently Riku first developed a curiosity about beer during a trip to Germany the Netherlands and Belgium Belgium, and he tried a lot of different styles during this trip but after this he really started to appreciate the European brewing culture and he later attended the Copenhagen Beer Festival and he really just liked the atmosphere there and then someone suggested to him that he tried to brew the beer himself and it stuck with him so he called Yoni and told him about his idea and then a few months later together they bought a 20 litre Braumeister home brewing kit and they started experimenting back in around 2011 but it's gone they've kind of just basically scaled up over the years if you like and in the very early part of their commercial story they were collaborating with other local breweries who helped them buy up their own equipment and then they released their first commercial beers in August of 2015. Over the last few years they've been gradually building up their brewing capacity and developing new recipes and they are actually quite a prolific brewery. As of May 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 230 different kinds of beer and they're currently producing around 60,000 litres of beer per year. So um, yeah this is one of the things in Finland I've explained this in other videos as well. Finland has been progressively kind of liberalising its laws to help out the microbreweries and things, which is pretty cool to see. But what you'll find is that the taxis are kind of bandied by volume of production 
over in Finland. So you'll quite often find breweries reach you know 60,000 or 80,000 litres or 180,000 litres and then they don't go beyond that for quite some time just because of the limitations of the taxation uh, system actually. So yeah it's a bit of a difficult thing for them. They can grow their sales so much but then if they expand you know it's a, it's a sort of Im it's the impact of the work that comes with that I guess that maybe puts quite a few breweries off expanding beyond a certain point because you know they've got to they, they reach their sales kind of limit if you like and then they've got to suddenly uh, grow their sales very quickly so they can uh, basically use this new capacity that they'll have so it's an interesting situation over there but it is getting easier and easier for the craft breweries which is uh, which is nice to see but um yeah that's all i can really tell you about my steel apanimo for the moment nice to have these guys on the channel once again and uh, i've been impressed with the beers that i've had so far so the first we had a rhubarb sour we had a mango sour i can't remember which one it was that actually published on the channel um, but then we had the Bye Bye Rye, and now we've got this one, which is the Imperial Stout. So, yeah, that's yeah, should be an interesting review. But as I say, that's all I can tell you about them just now. If you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. I don't know how well you can see it because of the colour, but you can see the dog's kind of snout there. So I think this one is named after one of their dogs. Um, and it looks like it's a Labrador, a black lab, maybe. I always found Labradors are funny. They eat anything. Labradors were always crazy for that. They would just eat absolutely anything. But um, as you can see, 10% Imperial Stout. This one, lovely artwork on it once again. And you can see on this bottom corner of the uh, thing here. Let me just see because this is one of the things, this camera doesn't zoom in quite as well as the other one used to, but there you can see the fox, which is the Maestila uh, Panimo symbol. Just a plain black bottle cap on this one, and there was actually a little blurb about this on the uh, website, which I've translated for you. So it says, a gentle lap dog, and at the same time, a sudden guard dog flickering from a canine when necessary, bully hides the roasting of the coffee, the salamaki, whatever that is, wrapped in earthy turf, as a background terrier, our friend Whiskey Nikanen. So um, yeah, maybe this is a barrel aged one. Actually, maybe it has been uh, aged. It doesn't say in Swedish, so I couldn't tell you, but I think it might have been uh, if it's saying something like that, it could well be a barrel aged beer, but we'll be, we'll be able to tell, of course, when we actually have a taste of it. But yeah, 330 milliliters, this one, I think this one was somewhere in the region of six or seven euros for the bottle. So yeah, to translate that for you, maybe about, yeah, probably about five pounds fifty sterling, something like that, and maybe in the region of, you know, seven dollars fifty, eight dollars for the bottle. So yeah, not bad for a 10%. Uh, Imperial Stout, as I've told you in previous reviews, Finnish beer tends to be a little bit expensive. Finland is the country, uh, the most expensive country that uses the euro as its um, as its currency, but they earn a hell of a lot. Their wages are quite high over there, so that kind of compensates for it, I guess we could say. But um, yeah, let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting. The Bully 10% Imperial Stout from uh, Maesti Lapanimo in Olu in the northwest of Finland. So let's just sugar up the last little bit. And there we are. So this should hopefully be quite interesting. You can see the head is forming just very nicely there. Quite pleased with that pour. And I tell you something, you can smell a lovely aroma out of this beer. Alrighty, is that lined up? There we go. Has to be lined up, otherwise my OCD goes crazy. But yeah, um, as you can see with this beer, this looks absolutely Looks absolutely lovely, to be quite honest with you. So before the head disappears, you can see that this beer poured with somewhere between a quarter and a one third finger of a frothy, I would say, uh, medium beige head. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but you can see the head is fading away to just be a very, very thin foamy layer just now. But that ring around the edge of the glass, I think, will remain there for quite a little bit of time yet. But it looks like a lovely, lovely beer, this one. Um, if you shine the light through it, it's certainly got a little bit of that kind of Coca-Cola coloured, um, that sort of Coca-Cola Pepsi coloured edge to it. But yeah, looks lovely. I mean, that dark ro uh, ebony rosewood kind of colour is, um, is absolutely lovely, of course. 
So, um, yeah, nothing surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. Remember, the colour of these beers depends on one, the type of malts that you use. That determines the magnitude of the colour of the beer normally. Then two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Um, barrel ageing and adjuncts, of course, will play a role in there as well. But when it comes to Imperial Stouts, that tends to not be the case as much as it would with like a sour or an IPA. Or, uh, or something like that. Not that you would or that you would barrel age an IPA all that often, to be quite honest. But um, yeah, there are a few interesting things with um, with the colours of beer that you can talk about. But yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. But let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Ooh, that does smell very nice actually, and I'm curious. I think this has been barrel aged actually um, and the barrel aging side of this one is rather nice actually yeah that's de that that has to be barrel aged um, it actually it smells a little bit like a scotch barrel aged whiskey but they're saying uh, Nikanen so I'm wondering if that is Nika whiskey from Japan actually maybe it's Japanese whiskey barrels but then again the name does sound kind of Finnish so yeah that's kind of interesting. Let's just have a little look at this and just see. We might as well. I never usually do this on the channels, but Nikanen whiskey. Let's just see. Uh, Nikanen owner. Hmm, okay. Yeah, Jarko Nikanen, he seems to be a whiskey ambassador for Finland. Okay, there's an interesting thing for you. Yeah, I wish I'd kind of known that before um, starting the video course, but yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. But yeah, you can tell that the whiskey aroma out of that is lovely so yeah let's try and break down this aroma for you a little bit more but the backbone of this beer um, you can smell that lovely smooth oaky woody character to it the whiskey side of this beer has a little bit of peat in it which i'm going to enjoy i can tell you right now i love a peaty whiskey so i'm probably going to enjoy that but yeah you can smell that lovely smooth oaky woody character there you've got a lovely smooth kind of peaty element out of it as i've explained in other reviews recently i always find that the more kind of peaty notes these tend to be a little bit more kind of earthy and grassy compared to sort of the german rauch and uh, malts and things like that that you can have and that would be really interesting actually to um to put a, to use a little bit of german rauch malt to make a whiskey i think that could be a very interesting thing to try but um the whiskey backbone of this beer is very very nice and um, it's kind of interesting because the the whiskey component that you get out of the barrel aging side of this beer comes across as very smooth for me scotch whiskey is always a little bit more kind of slightly grainy and a little bit more spicy than the american bourbons the american bourbons are a bit more kind of sugary and slick this one actually has a little it comes in the sort of whiskey note you get out of this comes in somewhere in between all of that which is really interesting so um yeah it's that's a really interesting point about this. The whiskey notes you get out of this, absolutely. Um, you can really smell that. As, as I say, a big woody backbone to it. You get a little touch of vanilla. I think you do get a wee touch of a kind of leathery and nutty note out of it. A wee tiny bit of vanilla as well. But then the whiskey note that sits kind of on top of that. It's got a little bit of a peaty character to it, but it's not madly peaty. You get a wee bit of the American brown sugary smooth bourbony type quality out of this one too. So yeah the the aroma of this beer is absolutely lovely but yeah the malty side of things sitting on top of that is also really interesting so for me you get a lovely kind of smooth chocolatey element out of this one there's um as as i say there is a little bit of a um you know, you can get a little bit of that stronger high cocoa chocolate in there you know a sort of 70 percent ish cocoa but then you also get the nice kind of smooth notes out of this one too i think which is um you get is you know a th sort of 30 40 percent cocoa chocolate Um, there's a good bit of brown sugar in there some oily kind of um there's definitely a little bit of an oily um treacle molasses kind of thing coming out of this beer 100 percent um but yeah absolutely you've got um yeah you can smell this it's quite a straight shooting stout on top of what's going on on the barrel aging, the barrel aging is really giving it, the, giving the beer a lot of depth. But yeah, lovely kind of treacly molasses notes in there, a bit of a sweeter caramel as well. I don't really get any biscuit or anything out of this one, but that's by the by. But yeah, lovely kind of high cocoa chocolatey elements to this one. Some um, 
uh, some brighter, I would say, yeah, a little bit of a brighter, um, kind of more milky chocolate coming out of this beer too. So the malty and barrel aging side of this beer is um, is very nice. I mean, um, I'm just hoping that it is barrel aged, otherwise my nose is completely off, but I'm pretty sure that has a little bit of barrel aging on it, absolutely. But um, yeah, the on the hoppy side of things then, um, you get a little bit of earthiness out of this one. There's a few remnants of a kind of floral character there and you get a smoother kind of grassy element out of it too. But as I say, if this is a, if this is a barrel aged beer, it, there isn't too much in the way of a green component to this one. And that again, makes sense when you think about it because if you barrel age a beer, you know, most of the hops are going to kind of drop out of that, but you still get a wee bit of grassy zestiness. There is a little hint of a floral character and there's some nice sort of earthiness um, in this beer as well. So, yeah, the the malty side of the, the malty and hoppy side of things go together quite well in the beer. The fruity side of things is quite interesting too. So you get a good little bit of a sharp raisiny note out of this one. There is a wee bit of a kind of plummy and figgy quality to it as well. Um, I think there's a wee touch of a sharper um, kind of blackberry in there as well. But the fruity notes are a little bit hard to pick up because of how powerful the barrel aging side of the beer is and how powerful the malty side of things is. So those are kind of quite distinct subtleties of this beer. But I have to say, I didn't realise when I was trying this one that it was a, a barrel aged beer. I was expecting this to be a little bit more of a kind of old school uh, American Imperial style or something like that. But uh, a nice surprise. Let's just say that is a nice surprise. But uh, yeah, from the aroma, it definitely smells barrel aged and it's got that a little bit of that almost peaty quality to it. So I'm very curious to see what it how this one turns out. But it says on the side here, this one has coma and it also has oats in it as well. I wasn't able to pick up the oats in the aroma that much right enough, but usually oats don't smell of that much. It's usually the way they make the flavours behave. But I guess that could explain the kind of thickness a little bit that you get from the uh, from the chocolate and maybe a little touch of the dryness from the chocolate as well. But yeah, certainly take a bit of time to ponder over the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it's about time that we have a taste of this one then. So this one is the uh, Bully, a 10% Imperial Stout, I suspect, a uh, whiskey barrel aged um, from uh, Maestri La Panimo in Oru in the northwest of Finland. Thank you again to Riku for making this review possible. So let's have a taste of this one. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah. Now, I think, I think this beer is, um, I think this beer is, uh, is, I think it's Scotch whiskey barrels that are in this. Let's just, you know, I, let's just take a wee look at the, the web. <laughs> let's just take a little look at the website. Um, this, because I'm pretty sure, just going from this beer, the first impression of this is a beautiful, beautiful beer. So we're on their shop. I'm on the shop website now. It cost five euros fifty, incidentally. Um, it doesn't say anything about it on the shop actually. Um, let me just see. Put it in English. Um, no, it doesn't actually say any of the bar anything about the barrel aging. So that's something I think that they should. Um, it was on the that bit of information I got earlier was on the untapped page. But just going from the flavours that you get out of this, I'm pretty sure this is um, whiskey barrel aged. This will be something. It, it I think this could be Lefroy barrel aged or maybe Talisker or something like this. That's a Scotch whiskey barrel aged beer, hundred percent. Um, you know, it could be it could be something else, but this one I think is Scotch whiskey barrel aged, and it's one of the more peaty whiskies like Talisker or Lefroy barrels that that's been aged, and you can tell that straight away from this one. Um, so there are a few other brewery, a few other distilleries, sorry, that it could be, but those would be the most likely, I would think, that have you know an excess of barrels and stuff like that that can be sold off. But um, yeah, straight away, this is a lovely, lovely beer. I can see why Riku would suggest this one to me. Absolutely. But I'm just, I was just very curious as to why. I wish, you know, I wish when they say, they say Scotch whiskey barrel aged or whatever, one thing I would, as a Scot, one thing as, as a Scot, I would like to see these guys do, and all of the, this goes for all craft breweries, if you're going to age stuff in Scotch whiskey barrels, see what distillery the barrel was from originally. I don't know if there's issues with 
you know, um, you know, trademarking and using the, the distillery's name and stuff. But for me, it's particularly interesting, <clears throat> at least. So, yeah, feeling a little bit, it's feeling a little bit entitled in that sense. But yeah, I would love to know what um, distillery these barrels come from. But straight away, I will say this is one of these imperial stouts that you have to. It's one of these ones that's a little bit of an acquired taste. You really have to appreciate appreciate a peaty, smoky whiskey. To, I think to enjoy this one um, as much as as much as you kind of could to be honest but yeah let's try and break down the flavor of this one then and just see how we go but certainly this stout leans towards that big smoky roasty toasty side of the the imperial stout spectrum mm. but yeah um so straight away with this beer you can feel that nice kind of smooth oaky quality just blanketing the middle of your palate there you do get an element of a kind of charred quality to it as well you can feel there is a little bit of that kind of charred edge to the beer so uh, or to the to the barrel aging side of things but if you go into that middle third of your palate you definitely get a wee bit of a kind of nutty and vanilla type quality on the front half of that um on the front half of that middle third of your tongue which i really like but you also get um as I say, the more kind of roasty toasty elements, um, more kind of roasty toasty elements towards the back of that middle third of your palate, actually. So that's where you get the kind of spicy cherry elements out of the beer. Um, I'm just surprised at how much of a kind of leathery quality the beer had in the aroma, because you really couldn't get the char, you really couldn't get that so kind of well fired charred element out of the aroma. It came across as a little bit more kind of leathery and things, which I was surprised about. So, yeah. Yeah, but the more that you drink of this, it has, when you take the beer in initially, you get a lovely smoothness. You can feel on top of those layers that I've just described, you get the the very nice layer of the whiskey actually sitting on top of that. And it does actually have a little touch of a an American uh, bourbon type note to it. I mean, maybe they could have blended this a little bit. Maybe they've put a little bit of it in a bourbon barrel and also some of it in the Scotch whiskey barrel and used that to smooth it out. That could be a distinct possibility. I don't know how common that is actually, but I have had a few beers where they've done that. They've barely used a little bit of it in the bourbon barrels and some in the Scotch whiskey barrels and then used it and then sort of blended them together. So I wonder if that's something that they might have done with uh, with this beer actually because the smoothness that you get out of the beer it's got it is more leaning towards the scotch barrel aging side of things with the sort of peaty smoky element out of it you do get a little bit of that earthy grassy kind of peaty quality out of this beer but then the brown sugary the, the sort of whiskey element that sits on top is very very smooth and that's a little bit more reminiscent of an american bourbon for me and it's got a wee brown sugary element to it as well which again is one of the traits of bourbon but the whatever the the barrel aging backbone of this beer the barrel aged backbone of this beer is very very nice actually um and it does you do get more of the kind of dryness and peaty smokiness the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer but yeah riku's picked me out another absolutely solid beer so riku big thank you for this one absolutely i can see why you would want me to try this beer um So yeah, let's focus on the malty side of things though. So it's sitting on top of the barrel aged layer, if you like, um, you get the big malty qualities out of the beer. So middle third of your palate again, there is a little bit of a kind of brown, homely, bready sort of thing forming the backbone of the malty side of the beer. You do get a little bit of a toasty, well-fired bread crusty note out of this. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of special B or maybe carafa in this one, potentially both. Carafa, I think, gives you the more bready notes, whereas the special B is the well-fired kind of thing. It's a bit, re some of the, the flavours I'm getting out of, the, out of this are quite reminiscent of Nerd Brewing in Malmö here in the south of Sweden. So I'm definitely getting a little bit of that out of this beer. Um, but yeah, nice. If you go to either end of that, middle third of your palate you get a bit of a bready build up you can feel there's a nice toasty uh, well fired bread crusty thing under there and then some smooth and um, just kind of brown bready qualities but then sitting on top of that you get the chocolate you get the layer of of nice chocolate so on the back half of that middle third of your palate it's a bit more of a high cocoa you know a sort of 70 80 percent cocoa and then as you move further forward um as you move further forward you get a little bit more of the kind of milkier chocolate out of this one you do get a wee hint of vanilla um towards the the kind of front half of that middle third of your palate then in the dead center you've got a lovely big you've got a lovely kind of treacle molasses type quality 
of um, out, coming out of this beer, which I think is very, very nice. So lovely big treacly molasses note. The brown sugars are not too prominent, though. This beer is all a little bit more about the kind of well-fired bread crust, the chocolate. Um, the chocolate isn't too sweet, remember. It's quite a bitter chocolate that you get out of this one than the sort of PT elements from the whiskey. But in the dead centre of your palate, like I say, there is a bit of a treacly molasses sort of thing, 100%. That's the boozy side of the beer. And yeah, you get a wee bit of a sweeter caramel as you move further out from that. And maybe a few more toasty brown sugary elements as well. But that's the middle third of your palate. That is where the majority of the complexity in this beer lies. And it comes out very, very nicely. But yeah, let's go on to the other parts of the beer then. Um, so border region between middle third and back third of your palate. You can feel a little bit of a bready buildup and a bit of a bread crust and well-fired grain thing. Then the back third of your palate, again, you get those nice woody layers in there. You get a bit more of the kind of charred edge of the wood there. On top of that, you get some of the well-fired bread crust and a bit of the bread again, and then you get some of the yeasty notes. So when you start at the back of the palate, the beer has, like, the, the height of the flavour is kind of like this. You can feel some of the more airy, yeasty qualities in there. Then as you move further forward, it condenses down, and as you go into the middle third of your palate, it condenses down quite a bit. And then uh, moves into that, um, it moves into that middle uh, that middle third of your palate there and the flavours are a bit more squashed together but there's a real complexity in there as we've described already but I think that kind of describes everything we need to say about the yeasty malty barrel aged side of this beer and um, but this is very very nice actually I really like this one but I would say it is a bit of an acquired taste the scotch whiskey barrel aging is always a bit more of an acquired taste you really have to appreciate those peaty scotch whiskies I think to fully to fully understand, if you like, uh, or to fully appreciate what this beer is um, is offering. It's not, if you look on Untapped, it's not the highest rated Imperial Stout you're going to come across. But again, as I say, there's an element of acquired taste in this one. But I certainly, as a Scot, I certainly like this one. But yeah, let's look at the hoppy side of things then. Yeah, so... Back corners of the palate then, you've got a lovely little bit of smooth earthiness in there. As you move further forward, you get a little bit of a kind of herbal quality and as you move, push towards the front corners of the palate, you get a little bit more of a floral note out of this. Remember though, when it is barrel aged, when it is barrel aged, it's, um, it's got a little bit of a, you know, kind of, grassy sort of floral aromatic -y kind of thing coming out of it you know most of those hoppy characters will have dropped out but you still get a few reminis rem sort of remnants that's the word i was looking for you get a few remnants of them but around the front curve of the palate some of the grassiness really is remaining there you do get a little bit of a nice grassy sort of citrusy note out of this one but um yeah the the green component of this one it has it's got it does give you a wee bit of hoppy bitterness as i would say some of the earthiness is there the floral notes and the grassiness and so i really like how that um, I really do like how that goes together in this one. But yeah, um, let's focus on the front third of your palate then, where you get all these nice juicy fruity esters. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you do get a lovely kind of, um, you get a lovely, um, how would you say, you get a lovely kind of slightly more bready build up, a bit of a well-fired bread crusty element coming out of the beer. Um, so yeah, I certainly like how that goes together. And the base of that front third of your palate the base of the front third of your palate, you get a very nice, um, sort of smooth, you get a bit, you can feel a bit of the woodiness under there, but then you also get a bit of the kind of bready character forming the backbone of the beer. Then on top of that, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. You do get a, a little bit of a well-fired kind of chocolate brownie at the very back of your palate, but then yeah, the fruity notes are coming out beyond that. But let's examine those fruity notes a little bit more closely. So yeah, sitting on top of that, you do get a little bit of a kind of raisiny note, um, but then, as I say, there's a wee touch of a raisiny note there, but I do start to get some kind of sultanas out of the beer and a little bit of a prune, probably a bit of a prune and also a little bit of sultana, just to clear up. Sultanas are the sort of dried green, uh, white, sort of pinky coloured grapes. I've had people ask me about this before. Uh, the raisins for me are the, the dried purple grapes. But yeah, I definitely get a little bit of a pruney kind of raisiny, uh, pruney, there's a bit of raisin on top, there's a bit of prune underneath, and then you get the sultana notes as you move further forward. There's potentially a little bit of a figgy quality in there, then you get a few kind of black currenty notes as you move into the front half of that front third of your tongue. And potentially just sitting on top of that, you get a little bit more of a kind of oily blackberry 
um, type note out of the beer, and I really like how that um, I really like how that side of this beer goes together. Actually, the fruity side of things is nice, but the the base of that front third of your palate does dry out and lean more towards that sort of charry, woody um, kind of peaty type element from the the whiskey barrel aging in this. Actually, so that's a really interesting um, point to make about this um, about this beer too. So maybe overall, it is fair to say that this beer leans it maybe it comes across a little bit like a russian imperial stout but as i say i think most of the kind of dryness and sort of roasty toasty bitter qualities you get out of this are because of the scotch whiskey barrel aging but for me this ticks a lot of boxes i really like the scotch whiskey barrel a whiskey barrel aged beer so riku has picked me out an absolutely solid one for this so i can see why he was um saying that i should have a go at this um but um yeah it um it seems very very nice actually so um yeah I think that's that kind of summarizes everything we need to say about the flavor of this one it's quite a uh, the the barrel aging side of this beer is very nice for a scottish palate i should say but yeah um in terms of the mouthfeel then let's round off the review there um the mouthfeel it's got a lovely um it's quite a slick beer this overall i would say and um, it's kind of bottom end of full bodied remember you always sacrifice a bit of the thickness of the beer when you barrel age it, that's just one of the, the things that happens. But yeah, carbonation is very, very smooth in this one. The beer has a real bit of slickness to it. And like I say overall, this is quite a, a sort of dry, roasty, toasty, peaty leaning uh, imperial stout, this one. But yeah, the malty side of the beer has a wee bit, has a good bit of sweetness to it. I think if it wasn't for the Scotch whiskey barrel aging, this one would actually be like a proper old school American Imperial Stout, you know, the sort of things that we would have in like 2012, 2013, it would be a little bit like that. Maybe the Herr Fredriksen from Amar in Copenhagen or, um, you know, these kind of beers. It would be like a proper old school uh, American Imperial Stout, this one. But the whiskey barrel aging just, you know, takes over, I think, in this beer. That's one of the issues with American uh, or with, um, with Scotch whiskey barrel aging is that it gives you really dominant flavours. But yeah. The barrel aging note in this one, this gives the beer a really dry edge. The malt base, as I say, is quite smooth, but it's got a degree of sweetness to it as well. Good little bit of bitterness out of this. I think this beer has to be somewhere in the region of, you know, 70, 80 IBUs. This is quite a high um, bitter beer, this one, but I might be wrong on that because I never know whether to count the sort of roasty, toasty barrel aging side of the beer as bitterness units, but it is quite a dry, bitter um, imperial stout, this one for me, but the fruits have a really nice dry fruity quality to them as well. So yeah, the beer gets a big thumbs up from me. I certainly like how this one, um, I certainly like how it goes about its business. And um, yeah, this beer I think gets um, gets big, big thumbs up from me. So um, yeah, well done to, uh, to my Stila Panimo for this. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this review. Once again, a big thank you to you guys for watching my beer reviews. A big thank you to Riku for making this one possible. I've really enjoyed this. And again, it shows you the strength of the Finnish craft beer scene. But let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from my Stila Panimo as well. This is certainly the most impressive one that I've had from them before, but that is not to take anything away from the other beers I've had the other ones were actually very solid as well. I was impressed with the two sour beers that I had from these guys, but this one really suits a Scottish palate, so I have certainly enjoyed this one. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media, check out my Stila Panimo social media, and uh, I hope we can return to these guys again. Probably in Riku box number three, we will have another beer from my Stila Panimo. I hope they do a Scotch ale at some point, actually. That could be a really interesting beer to try. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out all the social medias, and I'll catch you soon. This one was the Bully 10% Imperial Stout. It tastes very much like a scotch whiskey barrel aged imperial stout from my stila panimo in olu in the northwest of finland slanja skull keepis and kitos cheers just now